Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Vintage baseball cards are one of the most sought after collectibles in the world. I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom made vintage baseball card of anyone like the one I did here of Joey White. As you can see it has all the nuances of a real vintage baseball card including authentic looking scratches and stains to simulate age and use. This document is 800 by 1100 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. You can see dozens of high resolution vintage baseball cards in Google's image search. Just choose the one you like, save it onto your computer and use it as your template. For this tutorial, we'll use this card of Rocky Bridges. You'll need to download an image of old paper or cardstock to use for texture. I went to cgtextures.com for this image. We need to get it into our baseball card document, so just click and drag your cursor onto the tab of the file, and when you see the file open, with your mouse or pen still held down, drag it anywhere onto the image. You can see in the layers panel that the paper is now added as a separate layer to our document. Let's rename the layer Paper Base. Click on the template layer and move it to the top. Go to the left of the screen and choose the Magic Wand tool. For this image, I'm choosing a tolerance of 40 pixels. Click on the white background outside of the card. It made a selection of the white area that surrounds our card then press Control shift i or Command shift i to invert the selection. We'll save the selection as Card Shape. Choose your elliptical marquee tool and click on the center of the circular frame while holding your shift key. Now drag out to make a circular selection. If you need to move the selection, hold down your shift key. We'll save the selection and name it Circle. Go to the marquee icon again, but this time choose rectangular marquee. Let's make the selection of the orange rectangular shape inside the card. Click on the top left corner and drag your cursor to the opposite corner. Click on the refine edge button and I'm going to feather it out one pixel. We'll save this selection and name it inside shape. So let's quickly review our save selections. The card shape is the shape of the card itself. The circle is the circular shape that will frame our photo. And the inside shape is the orange rectangular shape background. Because the circular frame sides are cropped off in the card, we need to make a selection of that shape. To do this, press Control or Command as you click on the circle channel. This will call up the circular selection. Then go to the inside shape channel and press Control Shift Alt on a PC or Command Shift Option on a Mac to subtract the inside shape from the circle. We'll save this selection and name it Circle Cropped. Click the eyeball off on the template Click on the Channels tab and then press Control or Command as you click on the card shape to call up its selection. Click back on the Layers tab and click on Paper Base to make it active. Change the Blend Mode from Normal to Multiply. The paper is going to be used for its texture alone. Choosing the Multiply Mode will allow the texture to blend in well with the rest of the card. Press Control or Command J to cut the paper from its selection so the paper texture will be the actual shape of the card. Let's make a white background that the card will be on top of. So click on the paper base and then click on the new layer icon. Since white is our background color, press Control or Command Delete to fill this layer with white. Let's make a layer for the orange rectangular shape. Click on the template to make it active. Now press the letter I to call up the eyedropper tool and click anywhere on the orange area of the template to pick its color. Go back to the layers panel, click on the card base and click on the new layer icon. Click on the channels tab and press control or command as you click on the inside shape to call up the selection. 
Click on the Layers tab and press Alt or Option Delete to fill the inside shape selection with the orange color we chose with the eyedropper tool. Now drag the paper texture above the orange shape. When we click off the eyeball to hide the template, we see how the paper texture, using a blend mode of multiply, makes whatever visible layers are beneath it have a vintage old paper texture look. Let's rename the texture layer Paper Texture. We're ready to add the photo of the boy, so I'll be using the same procedure as before to bring him into our baseball card document. Click on the Channels tab and click on the Circle Cropped Channel as you press Control or Command. This will call up the Cropped Circle selection. Click on the Layers tab and click on the Layer Mask icon. This created a layer mask from the selection. Then click on the chain link to unlink the photo from the layer mask. This allows us to move around the boy's photo inside the cropped circular frame of the layer mask. Click on the boy's photo to make it active. Press the letter V to call up your move tool and move the boy into position. And then press Ctrl or Command T to call up the transform. To fit the entire transform onto your screen, press Ctrl or Command Zero. Go to a corner and click as you hold the Shift key. Then drag out to enlarge the image. If you want to move it around to another position, just use your Move tool. To accept it, just click on the little arrow at the top or press Enter or Return. Let's make a copy of the boy in the layer mask, so press Ctrl or Command J. Go to Filter, Pixelate, and Color Halftone. The Color Halftone window will open. For this image, I'm choosing a radius of 4 pixels. Keep in mind, depending on the size and resolution of your photo, you may want to assign a different number. I want to blend this pixelated image with the original photo, so I'll slide the opacity of the pixelated photo to 50%. Let's merge these two layers together, so press Ctrl or Command E and choose Preserve, so we'll keep the layer mask intact. Let's click on the eyeball of the template layer and make it active. Click on the Text tool and then click on the Text dialog box. I'm choosing a font called Cafeta, which is very similar to the font of Rocky Bridges' name on the card. You can download this font for free at defont.com. To choose the color of the text, click on the color box, click on the paper color of the card, and then press OK. I'll get the type tool, I'll press the letter T, and then type out the boy's name. I'll get my move tool and move the name down. Press Ctrl T or Command T to get the transform, and bring your cursor to a corner. When you see the curved double arrow, Move it clockwise or counterclockwise, which will turn the text on its axis. Press the arrow at the top or press Enter or Return to accept it. Let's go to the Layers panel and change some of the layer order. We'll hide the template and move the paper texture above the boy. Move the text of the boy's name below the paper texture. So now that we have the paper texture on top, it's blending in with all the other layers. Let's make a layer for the boy's signature. Click on the New Layer icon and type in Signature. Using my pencil tool, I'll just sign it Joey White. Whoever you choose for your baseball card, it would be great if you could get a sample of the person's signature. Then scan it into your computer so you can use it in his or her card. To resize and reposition the signature, press Ctrl or Command T to call up the transform. I found the Little League baseball logo on the internet by just typing in Little League in Google. I'll drag it up into our Baseball Card tab and drag it onto the file. The next step is to cut the logo out from its background. To save time, I won't be going over how to do that in this tutorial. It's best to do this without the paper texture over it. We'll rename the logo layer Logo. 
We'll resize and position the logo, so press Control or Command T to call up the transform. Grab a corner, reduce it down, and move it into position. Go back to the template, click on the eyeball, and make it active. Then open up your font list to choose a font for the name of the team and the player's position. Choose a font that's similar to the ones used in vintage cards. I'm using Arial Narrow. Type in the name of the team, and then go up to the color box and click it. I want to pick the blue color of the Little League logo, so I'll just click on it and it automatically changed the Yankees text into the same color. Press the letter V to get your move tool and move it into position. We'll put a stroke around the text so press FX and then stroke. The layer style window will open. Click on the color box and I'll click on the white color. I'll change the size of the stroke to two pixels. To make the player's position, just reverse the colors and reduce the size. Click on the eyeball to make our paper texture blend in with all of our layers. So at this point, our baseball card looks great, but to really make it look authentic, let's add some stains and tears to make it look old and used. Click on the new layer icon and press Control shift alt e or Command Shift Option E on a Mac to make a snapshot of our entire card. Open the Channels tab and press Control or Command as you click on the card shape channel. This will call up its selection. Press Control or Command J to cut the card out and place it on its own layer. Let's give our entire card a drop shadow. So click on the FX icon and choose Drop Shadow. The layer style window will open. I'll choose 8 pixels for the size, 6 pixels for the distance, and the opacity is 30%. The blend mode is multiply and the color is black. I'll zoom in so you can see the result. Click on the new layer icon and open up channels. Press Control or Command as you click on the card shape to call up its selection. Go back to layers and click on the layer mask icon to make the selection into a layer mask. Click on the empty layer to make it active. Click on the little arrow next to the brush icon to open up the brush selections. When the brush window opens, click on the arrow in the upper right. This will open up your entire list of existing brushes. I downloaded the brushes we'll be using from BrushEasy.com. The first set of brushes is called Ink Drops which can be used pretty much for any type of watery stain. A window will pop up asking you if you want to replace or add this set of brushes to your brush window. For now, I'll choose Append. Scroll down until you see the last set of brushes in your window and choose one of them. Make sure the size is what you want. Go to an area of your card and simply click down with your mouse or pen. Don't be concerned it's black. We'll adjust the opacity and blend mode later. Notice the stain only appears inside the card. This is because the layer mask we made is blocking the stain from appearing on the white background. Choose another brush and continue applying different brushes in this set until you're happy with the result. Go back to the layers panel and change the blending mode to soft light and then bring down the opacity to 60 percent. We're ready to apply the scratches in our paper. Go to the paper texture, click on it, and press Control or Command J to make a copy. And now drag it all the way up to the top. Change the blending mode to normal and press the layer mask icon. Notice the layer mask has a black edge around it. This is because the layer mask is matching the paper texture's shape. We need to invert the layer mask, so press Control or Command I. Let's open up the second set of brushes I downloaded. It's called Marks and Scratches. Choose one of the brushes from this set. Notice the size is 1200 pixels. This actually is the default size when it downloads. You can change the size if you want, but I'm going to leave it. Choose white as your foreground color. Because the brush is so huge, 
I've gone to an area far away from the edge of the card and now I'll click down. It immediately reveals the paper texture through the layer mask. I'll go to the opposite side of the screen and click down to reveal more scratches. So here is our final vintage baseball card. Using the methods I've shown you, have fun making your own based on an actual baseball card from the past. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.